Adam really should have died when he went outside the garden. One of the biggest puzzles I had when I read Genesis 3 is why is it, if it's so disastrous for Adam to sin, why doesn't God just execute him and starting out? So that's part of the reason why I lean now towards even saying that Adam and Eve were created de novo. And I'll say that um, there's no evidence against Adam and Eve being created de novo, even in this context. But we do have to ask the theological question of why. Because I think it really strengthens the, the parallels to who Jesus is much more strongly. And it makes sense of when it says that Adam was the first Adam, and then Jesus was the second Adam, right? You guys don't know what I'm talking about, right? When Paul says that. I think what they mean by Adam there is not that there wasn't biological beings, beings that were similar before, or weren't before, or weren't after these two. There's, I mean, because we're, we're sons of Adam too, right? But we're after Jesus, so how's it making the last? Well, I think what's going on is I see a really strong analogy between the virgin birth and the new creation of Adam where I think what God is doing is he's bringing these two people into the world free of contingency. So you have Adam who's created in this perfect environment with, without all the junk that comes from a human family, <laughs> with perfect parents, you know, God himself in this perfect environment, no bad influences that he can blame on anyone, um, no trauma that he's grown up with, and then when he's given a test, he entirely fails, <laughs> and it causes pain for everyone. And, uh, and there's no excuse for what he did, given the incredible privilege in which he was born into, right? <clears throat> Contrast that with Jesus, who is, who is not produced because of Adam, sorry, because his parents, Joseph and Mary, decided to, to have him. He's kind of put into this world of de novo, really. I mean, he exists before, but he's put it by an act of God, right? <clears throat> he uh, is in a, a totally fallen world, without power, and with everything against him working to cause him to sin, and yet he doesn't sin. And he's entirely righteous, and yet we all still conspire to murder him. And so Adam really should have died when he went outside the garden. One of the biggest puzzles I had when I read Genesis 3 is why is it, if it's so disastrous for Adam to sin, why doesn't God just execute him and start again? Why doesn't he just kill him and start again? I mean, that just seems like that's what makes sense. I mean, obviously what he did deserved death. That's the whole point of what we hear from Paul, is that what Adam did deserved death, not just for him, but for a lot of people. So then the big question comes, well, why didn't God deal with the problem right then? And I think it starts to make sense as we understand that what God did actually is show him unjustified mercy and let him leave, even though he deserved to die. This comes up again the story of uh, Cain and Abel, where Cain kills Abel. And uh, Abel was close to God. Cain was angry about that. Cain, and Abel's blood comes and asks for justice of God. And God, this is still that theophany of Yahweh, this image of Jesus in, in Genesis says, you know, well, everyone wants to kill you. You deserve to die. But I'm going to exile you anyways. In fact, I'm going to put protection on you, and you're going to have a blessed life. You're going to live for, for you know, nearly a thousand years. <laughs> that doesn't exactly sound like a curse. <laughs> I mean, he starts a city. He becomes a medical metal worker. It's not a curse, and, and there's no explanation given the text. I think what we find in Scripture is that, that the only reason why we exist is because God has been continually showing mercy that he has not justified to our ancestors. That's the only reason we exist. And there's this, there's this debt of unjustified mercy we carry with us. And that's why I think it becomes so important that Jesus, who did everything perfect and then we murdered, he comes back on the road to Emmaus. He comes back in the upper room. He comes back in all these places. And he could have been angry, justifiably, right? He could have been even more angry than Abel. But it says in Hebrews that his blood speaks a better word. He said, peace be with you, don't be afraid. So I just see those, those parallels just so strongly, and I think the Genova creation of Adam makes that stronger. That's why I'm, I'm leaning out.